Today, let's talk about the new flow builder inside of M365 Copilot. So really what you're going to see after you look at this is like a version of Power Automate Lite, so to speak, which will leave you thinking, well, do I even need Power Automate Full anymore? The answer is probably yes. But what we want to look at today is how this flow builder, right, this light version of Power Automate really empowers a lot of people to do some very interesting stuff. And while it's not fully baked yet, it definitely shows us kind of where the trends are going and how AI comes incorporated. All right, that's enough of the blah, blah, blah. Let's jump into my desktop and just build one of these so you can see how it works. All right, so here on my desktop, we're logged into the M365 Copilot. And remember that you have to have an M365 Copilot license, that $30 per month per user license, in order to use this feature right now. And so to get to the feature, what you're gonna do is go over here and you're gonna click on all agents. And you go up here to search and you're gonna type in flow and you're gonna see Flow Builder Frontier, right? Not everyone has access to this. It is English only right now. Like this is brand new. When you see that Frontier on top of things, you know, that's really their way of saying like, this is cutting edge, brand new stuff. It's more to help you think directionally, not to say, hey, let me go turn production stuff on with this, okay? So with that said though, if you have access to it, you can just click on it. And then that is going to load you into this agent for building workflows. Now, they're called workflows or right, they're called workflows here. They're called flows here. They have a different icon. And so they are Power Automate Cloudflow-esque is the way that I would think of it. They're, they're not Power Automate Cloudflows. Like when we create this thing here in a second, it's not going to go put it in Power Automate for us. These are their own thing, but you're going to, there's a very much a vibe. You know, if you have a Power Automate background, you're going to be a lot quicker to get up to speed with these than people that do not have that background. But their ultimate goal is that you shouldn't need that background. But right now, while they're in this very early stage, that background does help. And so what you're going to do here is you're going to jump in and you're going to describe the workflow you want, right? So we're just going to do something simple like every time I get an email from Chewy at powerapps911.com, read the email and then send back to Chewy a thoughtful reply, including a dog joke, right? We just want something really simple. We want to make this very first one really easy to work. So we're just going to take that. We're going to hit enter and it's going to start the process. I'm not going to edit out any of this or speed it up so you can see like how quickly it goes through the process. But over here on the left, you're going to watch and it's going to start to think about things. It's like, all right, I'm going to set up a trigger for emails from Chewy. The whole reason I did emails from Chewy, I don't want all my emails to get these crazy responses. Then it says, okay, I got to read and analyze. So it's like, all right, I'll do an AI prompt for that. Then I need to reply back. And so it's probably going to do an Office 365 reply. And after a few moments, it's like, hey, Here's what I did. Here are the assumptions that I made, right? So always kind of read this, you know, if it needs additional information or something's not all the way thought out, that will be in the assumptions. I kind of skipped over these in the beginning. And as I've got more experience, I've learned to read these just to make sure. It's validating I have connections to all these sources. I do. You'll see the Dataverse one in. Anytime it uses AI prompts or the AI functionality, it's going to include a Dataverse connector. I've got all those set up, but I could hit the drop down here and change my connection if I wanted. And I'm like, all right, this looks good. It did what we wanted. So we're going to just hit save up here on the top. All right, now saving did take about a minute. I edited that out. You didn't need to watch it save. I didn't make, make small talk. Okay, but so now if we jump over here as Chewy, right? So the green is Chewy's mail, um, you know, browser. And so if he says, hey, I want to send an email to Shane, and then we'll say something like, I mean, the subject, what is for lunch? And we'll say, I think we should go to Chick-fil-A and get a pup cup. Yin, love Chewy, right? Um, but he has recently found out that he really loves pup cups. So we're going to um, send this email. Actually, before we hit the send on the email, let's do this. Let's go back over here for a second and let's hit the little test speaker in the top right. Anytime you see that, that's been the AI world's test version, right? So it's like, hey, to see it work, now send the email. So then now if we jump over here and hit send, this is going to process. Now, it'll take a few seconds. So I'm going to edit that out. So hang on one sec. Okay, so now it says your flow is running. So I want you guys to kind of see like pretty quickly, you got the check mark, right? The trigger happened, the AI prompt. So you can watch the results, right? Like you can go through this interface and kind of see what's going on. As I've been troubleshooting, this has been very helpful for me to sit here and watch. And so then, you know, you can see that this went in here. Oh, why did the dog sit in the shade? Because he didn't want to be a hot dog. Bump, bump. I love dumb dog jokes. And so then now it's over here on the reply. See the error message? Sometimes you'll see these error messages. When you see them, like don't freak out quite yet. If it's gonna error, it'll error all the way out. A lot of times though, it errors and it 
doesn't uh, fail, but it did fail this time. All right, and I don't know why that would have failed, quite frankly. I, that, that one was pretty easy. Remember, this is very early, so if it fails, it's okay. You know what I'm, we're going to do? I'm just going to hit test again and see if it runs the second time, right? So we'll jump up here, hit test. It's like, hey, do you want to do this again? I do automatically with a recently used trigger, the failed one, and then let's just do another test. So I will just let that run and I'll be right back. All right, I just heard the bing, like Chewy got an email. Okay, so it finished and then my browser refreshed for whatever reason, who knows. But so I want you to see, like I went back in here, I guess so I went back to Flow Builder and then I went here to auto reply to Chewy with dog jokes. And then once you load that up, up here in the top, we click on activity. We can see that it succeeded. We can click on it and we could see that the steps all ran, right? So it all ran. And more importantly, if we jump over to Chewy's browser, then there is the message, what is for lunch, right? Think for the lunch suggestion. It's like a great idea, count me in. And then there's our dog joke. Looking forward to it, Shane. Okay, so that's, you know, yeah, it wasn't perfectly smooth. Remember, this stuff is really early. When you see Frontier, it means super early stuff. But in one, what is that, two sentences, we created an entire workflow just by blabbering, mm, build this thing and it spit this out. Now what's interesting, kind of referencing back to the whole, do we need Power Automate? So this is not Power Automate, right? Like if I go over to Power Automate Cloud Flows, this flow is not there. So it didn't create that. There's no interface. So I'm like, oh, I want to tweak this AI prompt that it's using. There's no interface to edit any of this stuff. I would have to go over here and use my words. It is not meant to be a fully robust mechanical build all those crazy flows that we've all learned how to build over the last few years. If you still, if you need to build those type of flows, then you should go to Power Automate Cloudflow and build it over there like you always have. This tool is not a replacement for that. The idea though, is that for those users that are not used to building flow, they can start to build things like this for themselves with just some quick little boom, 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 and you know, they're up and running. Hey, are you having a hard time keeping up with all the change in the Microsoft AI ecosystem? Me too. So me and my buddy Todd have started a, not a weekly show, but a every time there's enough news out there that makes it worth noting show right here on this channel. So if you subscribe, you're going to see a co-pilot news, what is new. It's a quick 10 minute ish uh, rundown, just as much news with quick little demos as possible. It's also available as a blog post and a newsletter. So if you prefer to get your information differently on that type of updates, then there's a couple options for that. So click the link to the video up there and it'll take you to the last episode. And from there, you can jump into all the others. And so let's show you some other examples of ones that I've built. Let's drag over these prompts, right? So these are some of the ones that I've done. I've been trying to save them because there's no real good way to get back to whatever you've typed in after the fact. So I'm trying to save them in notepads. I go and kind of continue to refine. So for example, I was able to say, hey, every weekday at AAM, create a new item in the SharePoint list employees. So Right? If you know flow, that's a reoccurrence flow. So every weekday at 8 a.m. wake up, create a new item in my SharePoint list named employees on the site. And I found it worked better if I gave it the URL instead of the site name. So I know the documentation says the site name, but the URL has worked a lot better for me. Set the title to new hire. After the SharePoint item is created, post a summary as a message in the chat with Flowbot to me. All right? So if we were to go look over here back under my flow builder, so if we go into here and then just paste that thing in, we're going to hit go, and as you can imagine, it's going to do the same process. You can walk through, watch the workflow. So I will just fast forward to this so you can see the outcome, right? And so it spit that out, bingo, bingo. We'd hit save. We'd be off and running, and every weekday at 8 a.m., we would get that particular flow. Um, and so one of the reasons I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a bunch of these real quick, is because, you know, like the language, how you talk to it is very specific right now, I feel like. And so seeing working examples from me, I feel like it'll help you guys get up to speed faster. So let's jump over here again and we'll do another one. And so how about this, right? When a new item gets created in a SharePoint list employee, so every time SharePoint gets updated, and notice I use that same list name and then the URL, find the manager of the person, so figure out who created the items manager, email them and CC me a quick note, letting them know a new item was added, then create a task and planner for me to review the item. In the planner task, include a link back to the item in the notes field. I'll tell you right now, this portion does not work. And it turns out there's just not a way to write to the notes through the interface. So that line I could probably, should probably just delete it. It doesn't work. Um, and then the planner group is, and so you have to give it the planner group flow builder demo task. And the plan is that, right? Now, 
when I was building this out, I had not done a lot with Planner, so I did not know what it wanted. So I went ahead and left out this portion as well, right? So I just basically said, then create a task in Planner for me. So let's see what happened when I did that. So we'll hit go. Okay, so after a few seconds, it's like, hey, Power Automate only supports the trigger if the item is created or modified, right? But my language very much said only do this when a new item gets created. So the workflow says, hey, are you okay if I use the new or modified trigger or do you want me to you know, not do this? And so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know what, that does make sense for me. So we'll just say, um, use the created or modified trigger. So it didn't have enough information, so it did prompt me back. I want you to see that it does, it is interactive as necessary. You know, our first prompt just worked on one shot, but this prompt needs a little bit back and forth. Okay, so you can see that it finished while you were gone. Now, it did not ask me about the details of the planner task. So I don't think that portion is gonna work if we're just being honest with each other, right? So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna go ahead and, um, hmm, what do I wanna do? I guess we're gonna go ahead and save it and try a test and see what happens, but I'm not expecting this to work. So we'll sit save, all right, it's saved. And so then we're gonna go ahead and create this as Chewy. So we'll go over here, add a new item, and then Chewy did it, right? As the title, it's the only required field, so we're gonna hit save. So th this should simulate a new item getting created. And then in just a moment, our workflow should start to fire. Now I forgot to hit test, so it's not gonna watch automatically. So what we're gonna do is just gonna click on activity here and we're gonna give this a second and it will pop up in here once it starts to run. Okay, so there it goes, it's starting to run. And so then now we can see where it's at. So it's only been triggered so far and we should be able to watch it get the Office 365 user manager. All right, and I'm having a refresh, right? Because we're not in that testing interface. We can see that it got the manager and I am Chewy's manager, so that part is correct. Okay, and now the email portion has been sent. And so then now it's off to work on the planner task, but I'm really expecting that to fail because we didn't tell it where to create the planner task. Okay, I'm wrong. It was successful. And so I went and looked over here in planner. And so under my task, it added one in manager reminders for review new updated employee. Chewy did it. So it did work. All right. So it kind of guessed because I didn't give enough information. So that's why in my original prompt, right, I had much better luck if I said, hey, the planner group is, and then the group that I created for this, and then the plan is, and so that way it would put it where I wanted it instead of guessing where to put it. I've had the same behavior. I've done some of this stuff with Teams, and in Teams, you know, if I'm like, hey, just put it wherever you want, um, you know, it kind of guesses and puts things out there as it sees fit. So very interesting, right? So the other thing I want to point out here is I've got this um, this one down here. So this one should automatically create an event. This one has not worked for me yet. It keeps failing. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Like there's, you know, you kind of got to go with a grain of salt. So now speaking of things that do and don't work, let's look at the list real quick. In Microsoft's uh, documentation, I'll put a link to this in the description. You can see that, you know, different things. So like with Outlook, like these are the things that should work. With Teams, these are the things that should work. I've also not got adaptive cards to work yet either. Um, all the SharePoint stuff I've done's worked. The planner stuff has worked. Um, I haven't tried an approval. The Git manager you just saw, and then the Dataverse based AI prompts uh, you also saw as well. So these are you know the limited things it can do today, right? Remember, super early, but hopefully it's kind of getting your brain going on like this is this is the evolution, right? I'm jumping into Copilot. I'm adding an agent. I'm saying, hey build me a workflow that does blah, blah, blah. And then it's just off and running and I don't have to think about it again. And so, you know, whether you're using it for something very custom like this, or, you know, back over here, uh, when you're in the original, you know, flow builder, uh, you know, so they've got some example ones here that you can also try out that seem to work pretty well. Um, if you need to edit them, right, we can click on to edit, you can turn it off. I've got a bunch of them turned off. I've made a whole bunch and then you can delete them. Remember, they're not gonna show up over in Power Automate Cloudflows. Uh, they do show up on the admin side, right? So if you look at the documentation, it explains how to find them from an admin perspective to kind of see what's going on with them. But I don't know, thoughts, comments, like what are you guys thinking about this? You know, does this, like, have you interested? Do you have users that are waiting for this type of build me with workflow with simple things? I would love to hear your comments down below. And of course, as always, if we can do anything to help you, right? I teach Copilot classes. We do Copilot consulting, both Copilot and Copilot Studio, Power Apps, Power Automate, AI Builder, AI Prompts. 
any of the Office 365, you know, low code, no code stuff, we're your team. So check us out. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.